go to war, we don't kill people, we don't, so that's, that's Rome that did all that stuff. You'll hear that in the Sunday morning service, man. That's, that's other religions that do that. My Savior didn't tell you to go kill anybody. So they go preach the gospel, man. Mm. Deal with their soul. Talk about eternity. Have their sins forgiven. Yeah. Right. Not go out and stink and roust up the government. And yeah. Foolishness, man. So good time last night in the street, man. I think anyway. Yeah. Did you guys have a good time in front? Some people out? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were loud. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. Journey yeah. and Toto. Yeah. These guys were old when I was in high school. Man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the average age, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm walking by, I'm like, they're like... Average age, 45. Yeah. yeah. Still rocking with docking, man. Crazy. Yeah. Preaching to your preaching to your beers, man. I'm like a lot of them were respectful. They weren't they weren't horrific, man. On your side? That's nice. Uh, yeah, on my side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they you, Kenny. <laughs> they just love Dave so much. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I haven't seen so much fake leather in a long time. Uh, <laughs> it's pleather. It's pleather. <laughs> with your belt with your belt of Jesus, man, I'll be on your soul. <laughs> Go try, hey, why do you go do events like that? Because you know what? Folks will probably never come to your church even though we'd like them to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to your place of worship. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go to where you worship and tell you about Jesus Christ, man. So, yeah. Good stuff, man. I like it. Amen. Uh, there's a letter on the back real quick from the folks at uh, Dr. Rockman's Missionary Board and list out all the missions, <coughs> uh, missionaries that they support. It's about one fifth of them so if you have a chance to go read it, i'm going to scan it send it out to you via email but uh that's where your your money went to there's a bunch of folks that have needs prayer needs and all that stuff but it's not in vain man it's not in vain so brother Paul, come on forward for sunday school turn it on for you mm -hmm. look at that sir <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I wanted to start today, and kind of like what Jonathan did, he got up there and he gave a little testimony, and testimonies are awesome, they truly are, because it helps kind of strengthen us, helps us to just see what the Lord's doing in each and another's lives. You know, uh, it makes me think, you know, I've known Jonathan since he was, what, probably four or five years old, honestly, you know? What are you now, 28? Yeah, he's 28 now. And he's still here, and he gave a testimony that, you know, he's serving the Lord, He's here in this church. It's awesome to see. I think of Justin. I've known Justin since you were probably, what, three years old, right? Three, four years old. Look at, He's here, too. I'm here. And honestly, I would say right now that us three are probably the strongest in our spiritual walk as we've ever been. You know, that's because of the Lord. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm not sucking up the Brother Dave there, Mr. Kodja. <laughs> but honestly, it, because, it, truly because this man, and I know Kenny knows it's true, he, he invests a lot of time into people. He invests a lot of time into the ministry. You know, and my message last time was on labor, and honestly, he is such a good example of a faithful labor. He truly is. Like, this, this guy, honestly, is probably one of the best, like, labors I know. And that's, that's true. That's not, it's not a lie. It honestly is. And he's invested a lot of time in many people, and I bet you everyone here could honestly have a testimony of how he's affected your life spiritually. And it's just it's good to know. So... Praise the Lord on that aspect. You now, hey, I got another. I got another what? At least seven, maybe. I think. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not that much of a preacher, man. You know. But uh, I was. I was actually. I was. Every morning when I go to work, I listen to the Christian radio, and there's a preacher I listen to. It's just like a short little thing. It's called Walk with the King. And uh, he was talking about, first, in order to grow in your labor in the Lord and in your reading of God's Word, you must be alive. If you think about that, think about being alive. Can a dead person grow? No. Can a plant grow if it's dead? No. So we must be alive, and I put it in parentheses, spiritually, to grow in God's Word and in the labor of his word. Now think about this. I know Jonathan and I talked about this. Some of us, it's a, it's a labor for us to read mm -hmm. God's word because his word is just, it is so much into it, but honestly, we can't understand it truly if we're not alive. So turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 2, and we're going to look verses 10 through 16 first. The 
the Bible says, For God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, and that's the capital S, that's his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. You know, and that, I think about that, the deep things of God. This book has so much in, in it for us spiritually. It's so deep. And if you aren't quickened through his Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to pick up those deep things. You can be lost. You can read God's Word every day. But you won't pick up those deep things. It'll all just be head knowledge. You won't be able to apply it to your life because the Spirit shows us in our lives where we need to apply it. And if you're soft and your heart's soft to the Holy Spirit and God's Word, it will show you in your life where you need to apply and where you need to live for Him. But it goes on to say, For what man knoweth the things of man? Save the spirit of man which is in him. That's just your natural man. It goes on to say, it says, Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. Look at that. Knoweth no man. If you don't have the Holy Spirit within you, you can't know those things of God because you don't have the Spirit showing you them. But it says, but the Spirit of God. Now verse number 12 goes on to say, it says, Now we have received, not the Spirit of this world. You think about this world and the evil, wicked spirit that's in it, man. Last night, we saw a fella holding hands with a lady. This guy had to be taller than Dave. Like literally, probably like 6'6". Six, six. He had hair down to here. He had women's tight jeans. High heels probably this tall. And I said, man, that is something else. It just goes to show you the devil and the spirit of this world, how he's the author of confusion. Because this guy is holding hands with a lady. This lady is with a fella that's a transsexual. But she'll tell you that she's probably a lesbian because she's with a man that's a transsexual. It just goes to show you the spirit of this world is just so corrupt and it's, it's terrible. But it goes on to say, it says, But the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. And that's so awesome. I like that right there, man's wisdom. Man thinks they're so smart. Man thinks that they know everything. They'll tell you that, oh, men just wrote the Bible. I've had that happen so many times. And I tell them, no, the Holy Spirit moved those men and they wrote. It goes on to say, it says, but which the Holy Ghost teaches right there. The Holy Ghost teaches us when we're in His Word. That's why whenever I pray, I ask the Lord to open my eyes, show me those things that He has for me. Because truly, we can read the Bible in our flesh. We can try to live in our flesh. But if we don't allow and yield, and that's such an awesome word I like, yield, because you have to stop. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to work. That goes against your Calvinistic, you know, they'll just say that garbage. But it goes on to say, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Right there, what does the Bible say also about preaching? The foolishness of preaching. You know, the, the world looks at us when we're on the street, and we're standing up there for Jesus Christ. You know, Justin's used this verse too about the foolishness of preaching. You know, they'll look at us and be like, oh, why are you out here? But God looks at us and he's like, you're doing that for me. If we're doing it in his spirit and not in our flesh. But it goes on to say, Neither can ye know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Right there, have you guys ever heard anybody tell you, you can't judge, you can't judge me. If you are spiritually rightly judging things, you're supposed to. You know, I, I, there's a, a guy I know, and he has a tattoo on his arm that says, Only God can judge me. You know, and I've, I've actually showed him this thing, and he goes, oh, I didn't know that. You know, people will mark themselves up with the most foolishness thing, and that's right there, the wisdom of this world, because they thought, he think, he's heard that from some man, or he's heard that from some teaching, but out of context, not in the right teaching. And he thinks that's truth, but that's the world's truth. It's not God's truth. It goes on to say, and I have this actually underlined and kind of boxed out all things, yet he himself is judged no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, and I love that right there, who hath known the mind of the Lord? You can know God's mind if you have his Holy Spirit by reading his word. It goes on to say that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ right there. Yeah. Look at that. If You cannot understand God's word truly if you don't have the mind of Christ. And the way you have the mind of Christ is through his Holy Spirit. You know, and we can just try to puff ourselves up. Like, oh, I know the word of God. And men try to do that. And you've, I've seen some crazy stuff, man, on TV about ancient aliens. And these guys get up there and they're like, oh, 
Look, Genesis 6 says this, this, but then they won't say that those are created sons of God. They'll say that they're aliens. You know, the Bible says it plain right there. They're fallen sons of God, fallen angels. But they want to take it and make it their wisdom and tell you that there's aliens out there. and It's just, it's just foolishness. But I said, right here on a little side, and I said, no one can instruct God. And then the mind of Christ equal to the word, his word, the Bible. We have his mind through his word. But now turn over with me to Ephesians chapter 2. You know, and I think about, you know, reading God's Word, and, you know, I've said it before, and Mr. Koshak goes, oh, it sounds so spiritual. You know, honestly, the only really, the only real book I really read is the Bible, you know, because honestly, I do not like to read, you know. Dave's corrected me on some of the text messages I sent to move. <laughs> Hell, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. <laughs> so, it was, it was about uh, Brother Gene Kim coming, and he put a little thing out saying, and he put a little shot out of our church, and I said... You know, I wrote, I said, no, maybe this is good. Maybe there's some people in this area that watch him, you know, don't know about our church. And I said, I said, A-R-E, not O-U-R. <laughs> and I said, you so it just goes to show you my skills in the, <laughs> and I said, you like, you like my uh, English skills? And he goes, you got no skills, kid. <laughs> I'm working on it, you know, I'm trying, you know. Well, let's look at chapter number 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. The Word says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And I like that right there. Were. If you're saved, if you're born again, you were. You were dead in those trespasses. We are a new creature. You know, the, the other perverse versions say creation. They turn creature to creation. They just destroy God's Word. It's... It's so something they say it's easier to understand. They just confuse and just mess it up. But the Bible goes on to say, says, Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world. Look at that, in times past. If you're saved again, in times past you walked a car. And, you know, we can still do that if we're saved. But right there it goes on to tell you when you are saved, you were. But it says, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. Think about that, in the lusts of our flesh. How often do we still do that? You know, you know, when I'm at work and the guys are going on about foolish things. and In my flesh, I want to just yell at them and tell them, shut up, because I don't want to hear it. You know, because they're just boasting in their flesh. And then me, I can fall into it and get angry. You know, and that's where I've had uh, times where I ask for prayer for myself because... When they're trying to poke you and get a little something out of you, you know, to get you to react, because if they can get you to react and you say, oh, I'm, I'm saved, I'm, I'm a Christian, I follow the Lord, and then you can get angry at them, that's exactly what they want you to do. But it goes on to say, fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Look at that, the nature, that's the natural man, children of wrath. It, but... It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, you know, and I like that. I have that underlined. He's rich in mercy. And people will say in Old Testament, your Old Testament God was so wrathful. He was so, do you know how many times David has said merciful, gracious, long-suffering? The God of the Old Testament is still the same, the God of the New Testament. He never changes, you know. So you, that's why you have to show people this, because they'll try to make our God out to be what they want him to be. And you have to show him through his word. And this goes on to say, for he is for his great love, wherein he loved us. And I like that he loved us. What does John 3:16 says? For God so loved. God loved you enough to die for your sins, to come to the cross, and to be beaten and spit upon. Yeah, amen. What are you going to do now with his love? Yeah. You know, that's why it's past tense. You know, it's just it's so awesome to see that. But it goes on to say, even when we were dead in sins. Look at that. We were dead in sins. Hath quickened us together with Christ. You know, when, when I was young, somebody, I can't remember what preacher did, but think about the quick of your nail. That's the life part of your nail. God made us alive. He quickened us through his spirit. But it goes on to say, it says, by grace are you saved. That's awesome right now. Grace. We're in the time of grace. Think about the Old Testament, man. All the sacraments you had to do. Most of I have talked about it 
all the slaughter of the animals. Hundreds of thousands at sometimes animals that had to be slaughtered. Imagine having to gather all of that and bring it. Every year you had to remember of your sins. When God says now, I remember them no more. You know, through, if they're washed in his blood. But it goes on to say, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness, look at that, and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So if you want to try to say that my God is angry, and my Bible says his kindness, his grace, his mercy. He's such a merciful God, and he's very merciful to me each and every day with the foolishness I think and you know, do. And he's right there along with me, and he still says, just come back to me and ask for forgiveness. And he's merciful enough to, and just to forgive us. So turn over to Colossians chapter 2. We've got all chapter 2 verses for this. Look at that, homicidical or whatever <laughs> Dave says, but with numbers, not with, not with letters. See, I'm better with numbers. <laughs> yeah. So look with me, verses 13 through 15. And you, being dead in your sins, in the uncircumcision of your flesh, right there, there, look at that, that's talking about before you get the spiritual circumcision, the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, there it is, made alive, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Not some, but all. And I like that verse, for all have sinned, come short of glory of God. That's why... We need him to forgive us of all our trespasses, all our sins. Verse number 14, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. Our sin was against us when we were in our lost state. But it goes on to say, Which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That's so awesome. Took our old man, our, our sins, and nailed it to his cross when we trust on him. Think about that. When he, when he got nailed to the cross, when all that sin was put on him, he, he knew that our sin would be put on him, every sin. Go in verse number 15, it goes on to say, And has spoiled principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Isn't that awesome? He made a show Amen. and triumphed over it. You know, when the Catholics put Jesus up on the cross or him like this, they make him weak. They try to make our God weak. Mm-hmm. Jesus was meek, but he wasn't weak. Yeah. He was a strong God. He was a carpenter, and he bore the sins of the whole world on him. He was beaten like no man has ever been beaten, but still took it and loved us enough to do it. And that just gives me hope and strength. And that helps me when I'm reading his word, when I read things like this, to help me say, you know, I might not enjoy the reading, but I get so much out of it spiritually. And I can't know those spiritual things unless I have that spirit within me. Now, let's talk a little bit about prayer. Who here... Love sitting down for 20 minutes and praying. It's tough, isn't it? Man, like, even when Melissa and I read at night before we go to bed, every night one of us will take turns praying. Sometimes just when somebody else is praying, the thoughts come in your mind. Even when you pray, foolish thoughts come in your mind. You know, and then when you sit down for 20 minutes, whew, that can be tough. But, you know, it gets easier over time when you do it more often. That's why it's awesome that we have a prayer list. Because I'll read it before I pray, and then I'll... Think on those things. You can even cheat too and look if you want to sometimes. (laughs) God won't hold that against you because I do that too. I'm like, oh man, what's that name I got to pray for? You know, Bob the plumber I work under, man, when I'm I'm working, I'm doing something, I'm concentrating on something and I have tools, man, I'll leave tools around. I'll forget where I put them. He's like, man, what's up with your mind? I said, I don't know. It's kind of (laughs) weird. But let's turn back to Acts chapter 16. And we're going to look at verses 16 through 18. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain, saying, or, or gain by Sue saying. The same followed Paul and us, crying, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us 
the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now I think of this, look, it says, as we went to pray, and this damsel screaming out, possessed with the devil, possessed with the evil spirit, as he went to pray. And that made me think about when I pray and all the foolishness and all the ignorance that comes to my mind. And it's the devil putting those things in because it's just the foolishness of his world. But it's awesome to say, what does he use to cast that out? Jesus Christ's name. You know, we have the Holy Spirit within us. We don't have to have those come in our mind. We can cast them out by thinking on him and things that are right. You know, and this is a, such a good example. And it goes on to say that they got mad at Paul and them because they took away their, their money. And that's awesome. I, I laugh every time because they're using that poor little lady, you know, for their own gain. But turn with me to Romans 15. We're going to look at verses 30 through 33. The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit. Look at that, the love of the Spirit. Everybody says, you Bible believers don't love, you know. Well, we should. We should love. We should have love of the Holy Spirit. That you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Look at that, strive. We strive together. So we should pray. We should pray one for the other. Even when it's hard, even when we don't want to pray, we should pray. I mean, I was actually telling Dave about this, the, the, one of the guys I work with. I told him, I said, a prayer came up, and I said, I pray for you guys every day. And I do. I pray for their souls. And I pray for me first that I can deal with them because it's rough working with them. But I pray for their souls and their salvation. And I told him, I said, I pray for you guys every day. And you know what he told me? He told me, don't waste your time. And I said, you say that because you don't know the power of prayer. You don't understand it because you're, you're not saved. And I said, I'm just going to pray for you more. And he's like, oh, okay. All right, you can do that if you want. You know, but we should strive in our prayers, and we should strive to make our prayer life better, not weaker, because it's so easy to allow it to slip. But it goes on to say, it says, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints. That may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. That through the prayer, and then just being around other people who believe and love God. Isn't it refreshing to be around people who truly love God's word, who truly want to serve him? You know what stinks is a lot of times when you get around saved people who truly don't care about God's word. It, it's drawing on you because you want to talk to them about something that you found in God's word. You're excited because the Holy Spirit showed to you. And they're not in the Word, and they just want to talk about sports. Or they want to talk about their dogs, or their cats, or what their, uh-oh, what their, what their kids did. You know, those are awesome good things. But the truly fulfilling things are what God has done for us, what He's shown us in His Word, because His Word is just so awesome. It truly is. And that's why we need to be in each and every day, because how are we going to know what God has for us if we're not in His Word? But let's look at verse number 33. It says, Now... The God of peace, look at that. My God isn't angry. He's a God of peace. He brings you peace. And how do you get that peace? By praying, by talking with him. That's what prayer is. A lot of people think, oh, i got to be so spiritual. i got to say, what are those Hail Marys and Thou Fathers and all this? It's not. Praying really honestly is talking with God. He doesn't want you to be like the Pharisees and stand on the corner and say all these nice things. He's not looking for that. He just wants a son that's going to come to him and just thank him, talk with him. That's the fellowship God wants with us. But then it goes on to say, peace be with you all. Amen. Look at that, the God of peace. He'll be with you. Now let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And look with me. Verse 17 through 20. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Look at that. Pray in the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We should pray through His Spirit. Which, 
at the, it says, in watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Look at that. That's why we pray before we always go street preaching, so we can be bold. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit and open our mouth for Him. Because a lot of times when you go out there, man, if you're not prayed up, if you're not in God's Word, and you do it in the flesh, and you close your mouth at the wrong time, and you open your mouth at the wrong time. It's so true. You know, how many times have you tried to witness in your flesh, and you said something, and you're like, oh, man, that was pretty dumb. Mm -hmm. You know, and you made your Savior look stupid. When if you were prayed up, if you were in His Word, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak. But it goes on to say, in watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which am I ambassador in bonds. Right here, he's, he's in bonds, but he's still an ambassador. He's still able to witness to those people. It says that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, if you're not praying to God, if you're not in his word, if you're not laboring in it, you're not going to speak boldly. You're going to keep your mouth quiet for him because you're not in his word. You're not filled with his spirit. You might, if, if you just got saved and you never read God's word, how are you going to witness? All you know is salvation. You can't bring him anywhere. You may be able to bring him John 3, 16, but if you're not prayed and you're not in his word, you're not laboring in his word, learning the things of his word, you're not going to have confidence. You know, I think about you know, when I work out. If you never lift a weight in your life, are you going to go and start squatting 550? You're not, because you're not experienced in it. You're not practicing it. So if you're not experienced in God's Word, you're not experienced talking with Him, filled with His Spirit, you're not going to go out there and talk for Him, because you're going to be always thinking it's going to be a devil in your mind. He's going to be like, you don't know that. You don't know that. So if you don't know it, how are you going to use it for Him? So, by God's grace... We labor with Him. Isn't it awesome that we can labor with God? Yeah. Think about that. The God of the universe wants you to labor with Him. He wants you to be there with Him. So let's turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to check that time, make sure to stay within the limits here. All right, we're going to look at verses 5 through 11. The Bible says, Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, and Apollos watered, Amen. but God gave the increase. Isn't that awesome? We'll go out on the streets and we'll talk to people, and, you know, we never really see anybody get saved. But that's not what we're there for. We're supposed to get the gospel out. God gives the increase. We can plant, and other people might water. That's why I pray if somebody takes a track, that somebody might come in their life, who saved, and show him even more, and that just backs up what we were there for. But God gives the increase. But it goes on to say, So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. See, God is the one. It's through his power that he gives the increase. It goes on to say, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Look at that, his own labor. You know, we should... And I was actually thinking about this. I was thinking about, you know, kids are awesome. Like, I think about Benny. And a lot of times we should be like the little kids. Because Benny, I'll be like pouring something, and he'll come up and be like, can I help? He doesn't want to do it because he thinks he's going to get something out of it. He does it because he loves me. He does it because he wants to basically serve me and help me out. And a lot of times when we get older, we lose that mindset. We think about, what am I going to get out of it? You know, we should serve the Lord and labor for Him because of what He's done for us because we truly love Him. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want a puppet. He doesn't want someone to be like, oh, no, i got to do this. If I don't do this, God's going to be mad at me. That's the wrong thinking. That's evil thinking. That's, that's actually fleshly, devilish thinking to think that God is going to chastise me if I don't give my tithe. We should serve Him. We should give because we love Him because He first loved us. You know, and I, and I was just thinking, I'm like, Benny's just like, I can help. I can do it. You know, because he truly he does love me, and he loves to serve because he wants you to love him as well, you know. And it's just so awesome to think about that because we miss that a lot in our lives. You know, when 
Think about when you get older and, oh, I've done so much. And you think it comes you. And it doesn't become the Lord. Well, let's keep going in verse number 8. It says, He that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are labors together with God. Look at that. I have that underlined in my Bible. We're labors together with God. How awesome is that? The God of the universe. God who created everything. He wants you to labor with him. He doesn't want to be just this God that over you and you do this. No, he wants to help you. He wants you to be fellow laborers. It says, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. I like that, ye are God's building. People say, we're in the house of God. No. We are the house of the Lord because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. But it goes on to say, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me, and there it is again, the grace, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Look at that. So he laid the foundation, but other built on it. Other laborers came in and helped out that. It goes on to say, But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is, or that, or then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And that's just so awesome to think about it, because we labor and we have Jesus Christ in us. So we can be laborers with God. And that honestly blows my mind that God would want me, just a regular dude who's pretty crazy sometimes, to labor him because he sees his son in me. You know, it's not me. It's his son that's within me. Now turn with me over to chapter 15. We're going to look at verses 8 through 10. The Bible says, At last of all he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles. Look at this. This is Paul the Apostle saying he's the least of the apostles. You think of him as being one of the yeah. best apostles ever. Yeah. You know, I know I have his name, but I can know I can never live up to him. I know he was short and he had a shaven head too, so, <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. I have his name. I'm not the tallest. I'm not the shortest either, so, but I do have a shaven head, you know. So I think that's cool. <laughs> but in verse 1, it says, I am least of the apostle that I that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Right there, by the grace. It's only through His grace. You know, it's awesome. We're in time of grace. Now. But it says, And by His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. Look at that. He labored more abundantly than they all, but it was the grace of God that allowed him to labor. You know, Paul was very sensitive after he killed all those people because he kills people that believed like he was teaching. And he thought he was doing something good. You know, I think about that, man. He was so fervent in that. Think about when he was shown all that wrong and then how fervent he was after he was saved, man. That's... That's awesome. You think of some of the foolish things you do, even as a saved person. Don't look at that negatively. Just take that energy that you put into your flesh yeah. and put it in for the Word of God, for, for Him. Because we can strive so much for ourselves. But if we truly put our eyes on Him and think it's not us, it's Him, we can do so much because we're not doing it in our own flesh. We're doing it through His Holy Spirit. So let's turn over to Colossians chapter 1. Look with me at verses 27 and 29, through 29. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Isn't that awesome? We went through the mysteries, and right there, the mystery of the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Us as Gentiles can have Christ in us. It's for all. But it goes on to say, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ, wherein I also labor, striving according to his working, not Paul's working, but God's working, which worketh in me mightily. Right there, he's keeping his mind on God and on Christ and not himself. It's God who's working in him. It's not him in his flesh, it's the Holy Spirit within him. And that's what we have to remember. We have the Holy Spirit within us. If we're saved, 
we're sealed, we have the Holy Spirit in us, we try to work on our own, we'll always fail. You know, when I was talking to Dave and Justin about this, you know, there's no more miserable person than somebody who's right. saved through the Holy Spirit and are not doing the work of God and not allowing God to work in them. We just miserable, just discontent, disquieted, and in, in debt. No. <laughs> I think I remember those. He didn't let me get that on Wednesday. I, I had it. I had it, man, and I wanted to get it. <laughs> Brother Reagan actually was preaching on that, so that's how I remembered it. See, that's why it's good to remember to listen to other good Bible preachers, because they point out things, too, that you might forget, you know. Good godly preaching does a lot, man. I'm telling you, it does. So, let's see where we're at in time. We're doing good. We are and should be fellow laborers with each other. Think about that. What did we do last night? We were out in the street, right? Were we there alone? No. One, we had the Holy Spirit in us. We had God with us. But how many did we have? About nine out on the street, I believe. You know, that's awesome. We're fellow laborers. We go out there, you know, and it, that's why at least it's good to have two people. Justin's over here. This guy's a champion. He goes on his own. You know, and actually that's a good testimony. Let me tell you something about him. A guy, Jim Barnes, I've been witnessing to for years yeah. and talking with him, has seen us at the nursing home and everything. He saw Justin out there all by himself, and he thought that was cool. You know, Justin's out there, you know, and that's encouraging to me, and that's actually good testimony to a man I've been witnessing to, you know, and he's being a labor for the Lord, and that's awesome and encouraging to me. But we should all be fellow laborers of each other. That's why it's good to come here to get strengthened with each other. You know, people say, I can have church at my house, or I can just listen. Man, let me tell you, that's a, that stupid COVID garbage showed you how, you know, when they try to separate people, you know? Men was, were meant to be together, to strengthen each other. That's why the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. We come here, and it's awesome because we love God's Word, and we talk about God's Word, and we're under the preaching of God's Word, and that's what we need. Well, look with me over at Philippians chapter 2. I want to look at verse number 25. The Bible says, Yet I suppose it uh, necessary to send unto you Aphrodite, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier. Look at that. I like that fellow soldier. And it has labor in there too. It says, But your messenger, and he hath ministered to my wants. That he's a, he's a companion, so we should be each other's companion in the Lord. We should be a labor and fellow soldiers. I like that. You know, I like that song, Soldiers of the Cross. You know, that's a good song. And that's what that makes me think of. You know, and if we're, if somebody's on their own, like Justin sometimes, I know he has the Lord, but it is encouragement, you know, to see that. But it's also encouraging. That's why they sent them two by twos. Strengthen them, keep them, you encouraged. Now turn with me. To 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And look at verse number 2. And we'll start number 1. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, that Paul was never alone. He had others who, who labored in the fellow labor. It says, To establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Look at that. Comfort you concerning your faith. That's what we should be. We should be fellow laborers with each other to comfort each other. Maybe some, one of us is having a bad day. Maybe the world's just getting you down and you're, just, you're angry. How awesome is it to have somebody who loves the Lord, who loves His Word, come up and give you encouragement from something from His Word, something you didn't think about because you're distracted by something bad that happened. And you have another brother, another sister in the Lord come and says, you know, remind you. Because we, we know it, but a lot of times we forget it. Yeah. You know, and that's the devil right there. He gets into your mind and you forget. That's why it's awesome to go over. How many times have we gone over these verses? Mm -hmm. But it's awesome to remember them because... Our minds, like I said, my mind is so short. It is. Now turn with me to Philemon.
Look with me at verses 1 through 3. It says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow labor, right there, fellow labor, and to our beloved uh, Athea in Acrippus, our fellow soldier. Look at that right there. And we got fellow labor, we got fellow soldier again, and to the church in thy house. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome to see that? Again, it shows the fellow soldier and a fellow labor. You know, we're not alone in this. You know, a lot of times we think, like a lot of times I can even think at work, man, I have nobody, you know, that loves the Lord. You know, there's a guy in my shop, he says he's saved, but man, is he so in, just persuaded by the men in the, in the shop. He just falls right into it. And it, you know, I believe he truly is saved, but he truly, I don't think, he honestly is strengthened in God's word. And that's where if we aren't in his word, again, like I said, praying, we could fall right back into that foolish talk and the foolish jesting that the world has. It's such a drawing thing if you aren't grounded in his word and with him each and every day. Now look down with me in the same chapter, verses, or not chapter, book, verses 23 through 25. It says, There salute thee, uh, Ephraim, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Articus, or Articus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers. Right there, look at that. Again, fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. It just goes out to say, man, we need to be fellow laborers of each other, strengthening each other. We need to love each other, right? I know sometimes we get weary of that because this world nowadays makes everything, you got to love, you got to love. It's God's will for you to love. It is his will for us to love. You know, we don't love the sinner and hate the sin. You know, that's, we were talking about that. God hates the sin and you can't separate that from the sinner. But we should love each other who are in Christ Jesus. We should build each other up. We should show them each other through God's word, how to strengthen each other. And that's why we come here, to be under the preaching and teaching of God's word. So now, our labor in work is never in vain to the yeah. Lord. Never. Any God's word does not return unto him void. If we're in his word and we're out preaching his word, we're laboring for him, it never will be in void. Now turn back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want you guys to look with me at verses 57 through 58. It says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. We have victory. He is the victor. He overcame death and hell. It's because we have victory in him for what he did on the cross. But it goes on to say, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Isn't that awesome? It's just encouragement. You know, if you're laboring for the Lord and you're not laboring for yourself, it'll never be in vain. It'll always build upon itself because God is in it. And if we allow God to be in it, you know, when uh, I think about the word labor, too, sometimes this world looks down at the word labor. Like uh, I think about in painting with my dad, the guys that would come on a job with no skills, didn't know nothing, we would call them our laborers. You kind of downplay I know Jonathan knows this, too. Everybody makes fun of the laborer. Oh, this guy doesn't know anything. He can't do anything. He's just learning. Well, we're laborers with the Lord, and we're learning if we allow him to teach us. See, and a lot of times we think, oh, I can do it. I can do it on my, my own. And that's what people think about salvation. You know, a lot of times people say, oh, I go to church. Man, church has nothing to do with it. That's just you trying to labor for your salvation. I pray to God. You know, a lot of people on, I'm on the street says, you know, we had one lady who told Dave she was a pastor. She thinks that that's going to make her right with the Lord. You know, we need to allow God to work in us. Not us to try to tell God what to do. And we do that so often if we're in our flesh. Now turn over with me to Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read 12 through 8. 
Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Isn't that awesome? He's saying that they obeyed, not only his presence, but while he was gone, because they loved the Lord. He goes on to say, But now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. Isn't that awesome right there? Isn't that awesome God had to put that in there? Because how often do we murmur and dispute with each other? Even save people. We'll, we'll murmur and dispute with each other. Oh, man, that's terrible. You know, we'll be like, oh, I did. how come you didn't come out with me? How come you didn't do this with me? You know, we have to do all things without it, and we can easily just fall into that trap. But it goes on to say that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Think about us in this nation now. I told you about the tranny we saw, and it's not the first time. It's not the last time we'll see it. This world is, in this nation is so crooked, but we don't have to fall into that. It goes, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Isn't that awesome? We can shine as lights in this crooked, dark, perverse world, but we can't shine if we do it in ourselves. The only way we can shine is through God's Holy Spirit within us. It goes on to say, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in, that, in the day of Christ. Isn't that awesome? We just went through that, the day of Christ. You know, that's our hope when he's going to come back for us. It goes on to say that I, that I have not run in vain. Look at that run. Our labor is not in vain. Neither labored in vain. Think about running. And uh, I'm, I, I only like the sprint. I don't like the long distance run. But if you think about our Christian life, it isn't a sprint. A long distance, you know, and you can't do a long distance race if you don't practice, if you don't train. So how are you going to get through this life that's a race without training? And how do you train? Through God's Word. You're not going to know how to live this life if you're not in God's Word, which He gave us the instructions. If you're not in it every day, man, you're going you're gonna to fail that race. And it's going to be horrible, man. It's going to be horrible for you. But it says, neither labored in vain. Our labor is not in vain if it's through God. It truly isn't. Look at me in verse number 17. It says, Yea, and if I be offered up the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. Isn't that awesome? We can joy with each other. We can rejoice with each other because our labor is not in vain. That's just truly amazing. Now our last one. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. We're going to look at chapter number 4. Let's start in verse number 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Look at this. He's run his race. He's run his course. His time is his departure. His death is at hand, but he's done everything through Christ. It says, I have fought a good fight, and I like that fighting. You know, I like watching mixed martial arts. I was watching it last night, actually. <laughs> yeah. But he fought a good fight. We don't have to fight on our own. We fight because of God that's with us. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's something that, you know, I think about all the time. And think about when you're living for yourself, and you, you can't say that. If you're living for yourself and your own self once and not the Spirit of God, you can't say, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Because what are you putting your faith in? You're putting your faith in yourself, not in Christ. When verse number 8, it goes on to say, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I like that because we went through the crowns and everything. That's waiting for us who love the Lord and who serve Him. We don't serve Him because we're going to get a crown. We serve Him because we love Him, like I said, like, like a child. But we will get a crown if we truly love the Lord and we serve Him with a whole heart. But it goes on to say, which the Lord, the righteous judge, I like that. He's so righteous. And, and think about judges nowadays. I mean, there's so many corrupt judges out there that have other alternatives, maybe somebody's paying them off. Nobody can ever pay God off. He owns everything. You know, he's righteous. He's the righteous judge. It says, shall give me at that day, not, on, not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing, that the day of Christ. Love his appearing. You look for the Lord. 
you know. And we should always be striving forward and looking for him, not because of our selfish wants, but we should labor because he loved us first. Yeah. Yep. Father, I just want to thank you for just giving me another opportunity to be up here, just to speak for you. I just want to thank you that we don't have to get up here and boast ourselves, but we can boast in you. And you're such a great God. You loved us so much. You came here. You died for us. And I just pray that we can truly labor for you. We can love you because you first loved us and just give to you, not because we think we're going to get something out of it, but just because we love you. We want to please you, Father. And that's where you help me with that each and every day. I just want to thank you for those that are here that love you, that love your word, that want to grow in your word. And uh, I just pray that you bless the message this morning. Just fill Dave with your Holy Spirit. Help us to truly be attentive to the preaching of your word, to have tender heart, to know where to apply it to our lives. And I truly want to thank you for a church that rightly divides, that wants others to know your word for what it is and not for how we want it to be taught. I just want to thank you and everything I pray in Christ's name. Amen.